Welcome back to my channel everyone. Today's episode was actually filmed back in September 2021. Dennis and I were celebrating the fact that we'd built and sold a project house that we'd been working on for a few years. So we wanted to take a long trip away to central Queensland. In this episode we drive from the Gold Coast up to Rockhampton to go fishing and then from there we go to central Queensland where we go fossicking <coughs> for gems in the gem fields. Mm. Is this where you're hiding the motor? Yep. I hope so. I think it's in there. <laughs> I hope we're not oaring. <laughs> we're paddling. What's that Dennis? Is that panning stuff? Yep. Sweet. So we're going to catch some barra and some threadies and also go panning and maybe get some sapphires or find some gold because we also have metal detectors in here hiding up there. But today it's all about fishing. Breakfast. And breakfast. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It's not what I normally film, but I really wanted to get some content out there for you guys because I've missed you so much. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Good morning everyone, we are here at the brand new Thompson Point boat ramp and Dennis is making a big noise over there, anyway, the ramp is beautiful here, they've just put a new one in recently, so you've got least dual lane concrete with a nice pontoon there and we are only around the corner from Port Alma where I got my massive big thread fin. So I'm going to take the tinny out and see if we can find some fish today. It was a bit slow yesterday, so I imagine it will be pretty much the same, but nice to be on the water. So we'll get this baby in the water and I'll see you soon. Doing that all by yourself, Dennis. Yep. <laughs> Dennis, what did you catch? Oh, a oh, little black chew! It's so cute. He's so cute. He may. Show us your lure, babe. As soon as I put the lure down there. Cool. It's like the only thing I've seen on the sound of this whole trip. We're at, we're at the cut through. And it is cranking! 
I'm just casting a hard body, but I think I'm going to switch to a vibe. I don't really know what the bottom's like here. There's rocks and stuff, but I'm getting the snag. This is the vibe I've got on. And I'm also using my breeze. And I caught my big barrel on a dowel in Darwin. Coffee's ready. Don't know if you want midges with that, but there's plenty of midges to go around. <laughs> Okay, babe. Look at that smoker. That's a good smoker. Not sponsored by Mortine. No. <laughs> now, you might be asking, why are we not on the water? We've already been fishing for an hour and a half. And we're just waiting for the tide to turn and start running and then we'll jump back out there and have another fish. But it is amazing. So we've just stopped off at the beautiful Dawson River here. Have a little sticky beak and a little cast for some Saratoga. When we got here it was quite cloudy so we saw quite a few swells on the surface but the sun has come back out now and I think Toga have gone deep again or something. I've got a little hard body on and Dennis had a little surface lure and we had some swells but now that the sun's back out they've disappeared so I think we're gonna head off and head to camp and possibly come back here another time on our trip. It's a beautiful little spot though, beautiful creek, there's lots of cattle fields and different stuff around here so I'm guessing this is where they get most of their water from. Alright, we're going to head off. It's got a bib on it, that's right.
so we came back to the Dawson River to have another cast this morning because we were here yesterday afternoon saw lots of swirls Dennis had one tiny little bump and I didn't have any bites but thought maybe there'd be some Saratoga in here so spent the night down the road and came back early this morning and it's a completely different feel today like I haven't seen very many swells at all next to nothing and definitely no bumps really thought the morning would be a great morning bite but it's just completely dead so weird like I just thought it would be so good this morning I thought little insects would be landing um, the only thing I got a hit from was a kingfisher because I was uh, casting a little mouse and I had it out there just sitting there and then he came down and had a bump at it but that's all I've had and yeah very disappointed so maybe this is more of an afternoon type place not sure because they're definitely not getting anything right now anyway so still no fish not that that's what this trip was about it's about just getting out and enjoying and seeing some cool places around Australia or well, around Queensland at least anyway so I will keep you updated <laughs> This is Blackdown Tablelands National Park. Rising high above the surrounding plains, the park protects deep gorges, spectacular lookouts and scenic waterfalls. Situated 180 kilometres west of Rockhampton and 110 kilometres east of Emerald, we find this magnificent place in the heart of nowhere. This is the traditional homeland of the Gungalu people, who have visited Blackdown Tableland for thousands of years. The park's cultural sites are vivid and visual reminders of their continued connection to this land. Out of respect to the Gungalu people, I didn't want to film too much of their cultural art, so you'll just have to come and visit this place and see it for yourself. Like a ship. <laughs> this is cool, Dennis. See this every day, do we? I'd love to revisit Blackdown Tablelands after they'd had a really good flush of rain because these pools would be absolutely spectacular to swim in with beautiful fresh water in it.
big drop. And the boulders are insane. I'd love to see under that footprint. Like a nice park. We're at Emerald at the Botanical Gardens. Just trying to find somewhere to stay. Probably at a caravan park or something. And then we can go fossicking. So let's go have a look at the river. This looks like cod country. Hmm, little turtle out there. All right, we're off. We've joined a group. Um, we're first timers here, fossicking for sapphires. So we're gonna try our hand at finding some gemstones. <laughs> Sort of not what I was expecting. <laughs> Just in the middle of nowhere. You know, I expected creeks or valleys or yeah. stuff like that. I think I found a pocket here. <laughs> On my very first dig. Definitely a pocket. <laughs> Alright, little dude. Yeah. Max, what do I do so I don't miss one? <laughs> I feel like I've already missed three good ones. <laughs> don't, don't get two big ones. That's not one. Pull that out and pull this shit out. Mm -hmm. So when you wash it, it'll get in the, in the water and make a bit of a... They're, they're not heavy enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's jasper, red jasper. Uh-huh. Plenty of that here. So it's just saves washing all those, that's all. Yeah, you got two buckets? I've got a couple of buckets, yeah. Yeah, well look, you want one for the big ones. Um, yeah. Get one. Oh, I don't know. It's glass or sapphire. Oh, I don't think it'd be glass. In the, in the ground, it's it going to be, be glass. a sapphire. It's yeah. yeah. See all that, like all that little, little stuff. And that's like your mud layer of just dirt. And then you got your billy boulders, apparently. And then you got all your like your small stuff in between it. Still not a hundred percent on this spot, but. We'll give it a go anyway. Oh, he's got one. Yep. You can have a look. Yeah, it's like a greeny color, isn't it? Yeah. Apparently, it's some. Um, it's very pretty. That's why I thought it was glass because it's yeah. so thin and so clear. It's beautiful. Oh, the palm of your hand. Oh, that's a fabulous little device. And hold it up to the light. You see the light. Oh, it. yeah. Magnificent. It didn't, that just come out in the dirt. And it did. So, please excuse my dusty, disgusting appearance. But now we're back at our caravan park. And this is um, called a Willoughby, apparently. Put your finds in there. Give it a good shake up and down in the in the water trough and it cleans it. I think that's how it goes. I think so. Alright. You 
probably check those heavies. Would you call that heavies or that's just quads? Yeah, that's the best I've found so. <laughs> <laughs> I do need right. a little thing to put. There's all that dirt on top. There's so much grass. All right, now to sort through this finer stuff that we've got. Everything sh sort of should be in the middle, but I don't think we're using the willoughby properly, so there's a lot here to sort through. So we're just going to sort of sort through it. I've got some tweezers there. Dennis has gone to get a, um, a torch because we don't have much sunlight, so might be a little bit tricky to see things, but we'll do our best. Got to get that genuine reaction when you find the first one. Yep. Don't have to yell at me though. <laughs> <gasps> no jokes. I don't know what that is, but it's clear as hell. That's a zircon. Could be. I'm calling it. It's nice and clear. It's clear as. It's, it's clear as like it's proper crystal quartz if it's anything. Nice, it's got, clearest thing it's I've got seen. Sharp edges on it. In the bottle it goes, Dennis. Good job. See, what? I let you sit on that side for that reason. Why did you just change accents there? Pretty good for me. Flip it. Flip it. Flip it. Flip it. Don't waste water out here. Still don't know how to do that properly. Oh, look at that! <laughs> it's nothing! It's nothing! How do you know when you've got it to a spot that you like it? I want it flat. It's not going flat, is it? That's sort of flattish. Let's do the reenactment, Dennis. Reenactment? <laughs> reenactment of what? Let's see if you guys can see it in this vicinity. Don't get too close because it won't focus. I saw it as soon as I flipped it. Yeah, me too. Right in the center where it should be. And it's bright blue. Fossicking can be fun when you find what you've actually been looking for. So after digging all those buckets of dirt and bringing them back and washing them, this is exactly what we wanted to find, a beautiful blue sapphire. Now to find something even bigger. Because we're having such a hard time trying to find gems in the public fossicking fields, we decided to head over to Gemfields Fossicking Park, which is in the heart of Sapphire. At this establishment, you buy buckets of wash to pan yourself and you're bound to find lots of sapphires. So I think it's like 20 bucks a bag and three bags for 50. And I'll show you the scoreboard. So this scoreboard here is proof that people are finding nice sized gems in their buckets of wash that they've bought at the Gemfields Fossil King Park. So it's definitely worth buying a few buckets and having a good pan here because you're bound to find some gems. Did you calibrate yourself? So what I'm doing here is using divining rods to find the perfect bit of dirt to put into my bucket. Some people don't believe in divining rods, but it's a little bit of fun to have a go with it. And if I'm super lucky, I could potentially put some nice gems into my bucket to pan out. So let's give it a go. Yeah. Alright Brooke, get a bit from up here. Find us a new boat. A new boat? He's picking them out already. So this pile of dirt here, otherwise known as wash, comes from a working mine around the town of Sapphire. The vendors of these establishments go in and handpick out truckloads of dirt to bring back to their properties so that customers like us can pan loads of dirt and find lots of gemstones. This bucket will decide what size the boat is. That's it. Backwards and forwards that one. That's it. Perfect. Then you put both sieves in the empty bucket and repeat, repeat, repeat. I can see him 
in there already, dude. Mm. Where are they getting this stuff from? Where were we digging? Zircon? Or sapphire? Party? That one's not very clear, but it's green. Wow. Well, there's one there. <laughs> I'll just chuck them back in. Guys, come to a place like this, pay your 20 bucks for your bucket, and you're bound to get some pretty gems. That comes from a working mine, not yeah. just the free planes. Very, very easy work. Rather than out digging in those holes all day. So I'm just separating mine well, look at that. That's a big clear thing. No, oh, it's just quartz, but it's very clear. Now that we've got our two separate buckets, we're going to go over to the Willoughby and wash it. Please excuse my poor terminology and my lack of knowledge on the process of fossil king sapphires, but Dennis and I one. are very new to this, so it's all a learning curve for us, but I hope you still enjoy. Coarse pan on top and the fine one on the bottom. happening apparently so all the heavy stuff goes into the middle and because we've already pre pre-sized them I won't have much in the second part We didn't really need to separate them from there, but flip it. All different kinds of stones. You yeah. didn't wash it anywhere near no, enough. No, I didn't wash it anywhere near enough. Still very muddy. Didn't wash it anywhere near enough. Alright, <laughs> let's wash it again. Okay. That's good, Dennis. Yeah. Heaps of blues. Oh, lovely. Oh, look at that. You can see them all in the middle. Mm. Wow. Look at this guy. There's a green. Three. Having fun? Yeah. Not as backbreaking as digging all that dirt for the last few days. That's a biggie. Very nice. Pretty pretty, oh wow, I see heaps in there. Hmm, I don't know if this is one, it's shiny like one. Yeah, I've just been putting them in there anyway. I think it is. Mm. Very shiny. Considering they get the sort of black ones as well. Why? If it looks like glass, it's a sapphire. It's so see-through. That's a perfect oh, that's one. That's pretty. 
Oh, it's got no fish. cracks in the roll. Yeah. Yep. Is it a fishing red crawling in it? Yeah, that's all right. Wow, there's so many in here. Yeah. I don't think we're digging anymore. No. Well, other people did for you. Sorry guys, no more digging for us. Yeah, I had a This is good. Yeah, we've had Oh wow, that's a nice one. Oh wow. Pretty, pretty. That's, that's like two carrots, one. easy. I'm just going to pick them all out, even if they're not like super good quality. Is it? Yeah, I've it been keeping. Like I've been it. keeping the shiny yeah, ones like too, that. Yeah, me too. Me too. I feel like. Yeah. It's not see-through, but I wanted to ask you about those ones. Yeah, I've kept a couple of them. Like yeah. I've got a real round one. Look at this one. Mmm. Yeah, I couldn't like. Yeah, only today I've sort of been like maybe there are something after going into the gem shop, and they have those black ones. That's so many. Look at this red one. I'm gonna get my seat. Oh wow, that's a good one. That's like a two, three carat there. That's different. Oh, that's a two pink, two color one. That's cool. It's Mm. And this thing? What about this? That was in there? All from one bucket, eh? One bucket. And we got this guy now. That, that is a lot of gems. Some pretty cool stuff in there. Oh wow, 33! Thorns with tentacles. Fizz out, fizz out. That's what you call an ass whooping. That's cool. Bye, Dawn. <laughs> Bye, Dawn. 27. I missed it, really. It looks no, so right. I saw it, it and I was like, wow, that's really smashed. And you can't see anything? No, you can. I couldn't. I should go and pick it up and have a quick look. Yeah, go for it. My name's going on the board. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, I love it. Green, Green ball. ball. Green That's ball. ball. Fabulous. Thank you. Yeah. That's me. Pretty. Yeah. And we're off. Lovely. We're out of here. We're gonna go have some lunch. Breakfast. <laughs> Now what we're standing on here is bedrock granite. We class this as the absolute bottom. Now, the, in saying that this is the bottom, hundreds of millions of years ago, this used to be the surface. Miners Heritage is Australia's largest walk-in underground sapphire mine tour, where you step into a world that's about 15 metres below ground level. A very informative tour guide takes you through a network of tunnels providing insight into the process of underground sapphire mining. 
You can marvel at the tiny tunnels called tummy tunnels used by our pioneer miners. So if you've got 40 minutes to spare, I highly recommend taking the tour. The entranceway was here via a shaft. That's where they went. That's their drive. You're kidding! No, it's called a tummy tunnel. Elbows and knees only. Yeah. Now you see what I mean by confined spirit. Right and here is more of that 1960s. 1930s to finish it off. So they found the bedrock and they've gone in and followed it. This one goes a fair way around. Right? Oh, have a look there. Oh, wow. Probably lean over more. Yeah. Because it goes around the corner. That's so cool. So on this day we went back to Glenalva Fossil King Park and found ourselves what seemed to be a nice little spot and started to process some dirt. We set up a little processing plant for ourselves. We've got all our sieves, buckets, water and everything we need to process the dirt on the spot and try and find some gems. You can see in this particular spot that we've chosen the layers of dirt that we're looking for. So you've got the overburden and dirt on top. Then you've got all your billy boulders, which is a natural occurrence when volcanoes erupt. And then underneath that, you'll have all your little tiny bits of gravel, and then you'll have an ash layer. And that's where the sapphires are going to be sitting, in between all those billy boulders and the small gravel sitting on top of the ash. So that's what I'm picking at now, which we will process and try and find gems. Well, that's that. We cleaned that whole area in there, all the way from like here, all the way in sort of stops here. I started digging over here and couldn't see anything good. And then we even cleaned this spot here and got nothing. So it's all our trailings over there. What a bummer. Got that one nice green sapphire, but it could have just been from whoever's dug this centre area. Could have just been left over from them and they must have missed it and we got nothing. So that's four hours of cleaning and washing. Luckily we brought water this time because otherwise if we took all that dirt home back to the camp and panned it over there and got nothing that would have been pretty frustrating but we are going to head off to another spot and spend another couple of hours if we can find some shade and try our luck. This is why people buy bags of dirt because this is hard work to get one gem out of it and it's not even like a big gem it's pretty frustrating pretty cool when you do find something but yeah that's it welcome to the hot bush just in case you didn't know sapphires and many other gemstones are created by minerals and specific volcanic activity which is why this area is so rich in sapphires and zircons, with more than 70 plug intrusions that occur within a 50 km diameter. The oldest known intrusive basalt plug in the world is this one, Policeman's Knob, and with a name like that, we couldn't help ourselves but go and take in the view from the top. I'm guessing that's west because the sun's over there. Yeah, you're right actually. So, north is Flatsville. Yeah. Like north would be that way. Yeah. I wonder what that one is over there. It's got quite a flat top. It looks cool. That's a typical volcano, eh? <laughs> Dennis Yell <the old> Miner. <laughs> G'day. <laughs> Look at that. Old Willoughby. little place. This is our last day for the season, yep, that'll do you. Where's this gravel come from? 
It comes from a commercial mine. Okay. Um, unmined. This is it's virgin, mm -hmm. virgin dirt. Um, Gay has a contract with one of the mines and she goes out to where they're mining. Yeah. Looks at the lay of the land and says I'll have a load from there. They dig it out, stick it on a take the other burden off. Yeah. On a truck there, down, down. How's it going, hun? <laughs> this is nice here at Miner's Cottage. Good stuff. You've got your willowbees, tables. And what's your name? Ivy. Ivy, and what's your name? Having a lovely day. <laughs> This one didn't have as much in it. I shook it all through. Mm. That's one. Yeah. Wow, that is you can't get that close, it won't be. It's like blue but not Oh, it is so through, look at it. That's a good cutting one. Oh, wow, that so is deep. Miner's Cottage was another really lovely, well-run little business with great value for money. You pay $25 for a bucket of wash. You also get tea, scones, jam and cream. They also help you sort your gemstones in case you find some that you might want to get cut. I wanted to show you all the sapphires and zircons that we found on our trip to Sapphire Ruby Vale in central Queensland. I've sorted them onto plates so you can see where they came from, the ones that we fossicked and the ones that we bought bags of wash from different places. This is under natural light under the gazebo and then I've got them showcased out in the sunlight so you can see the difference. I'm very pleased that we got some beautiful gemstones on our trip. Unfortunately there's only a few in there that are worth getting cut, so someday soon I'll send them away to Lambert's Gem Cutting in Bangkok, Thailand and then I'll be able to show you the finished products. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Dennis and I beating around the Australian bush, attempting to find some fish and also attempting to find some beautiful Australian sapphires. I know it's not my usual content that you guys really enjoy, but I really wanted to get something out there for you. I really love the outdoors and I love fossicking and I love fishing, so I hope you enjoyed this episode too. And if you did enjoy this episode, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and tell your friends about it. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next one.